In this video, I'm gonna show you the two things I'm most excited about in Tailwind 3.1. First party TypeScript types and arbitrary variants. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. All right, so I've got a basic thing open over here on the left. And then on the right here, I've got the Tailwind 3.1 blog article. You can see he's given you a long list of kind of everything that's in here, including uh, just kind of explanations on how to get started. But there's also a nice intro video. He's no Simon, but it's still nice to have something from Adam here. And if I scroll down, you can see that here are kind of the basic landmark features. Now, uh, this is kind of a small release. It's a point release, but even so, there are two in particular that I thought it'd be worth doing a video on because I'm going to find them really helpful. I already have in a couple of projects that will be coming out soon. First of all, this first party types is a great one. And then secondly, arbitrary values, but for variants. So arbitrary variants. So both of those, and then there's a bunch of other ones I'll leave you to check out yourself. I'll leave links to all this in the description, but if you want to make sure you're on the latest, make sure you just run this command right here. If you're not sure what you are running, you can come in here to your package.json and look here. Here I've got Tailwind 3.1.3, so I know I'm up to date, um, but you may not be there, so you can update it just with this. Obviously, you might want to have some kind of save point, but I'll leave that to you. Now, this is not an introduction on Tailwind. I'm assuming you already know how to use Tailwind. If you're not sure how to use it, I've done an entire video showing you how to get started with Tailwind CSS, including laying out an entire landing page, and I'll make sure to link that in the description. All right, if I come down here, first of all, this first party TypeScript types. So what it's going to do is it's going to add this little line to the top of your Tailwind config file. And if I were to open that up, my Tailwind config file, you can see that's exactly what it's done here. Now, if you're like me and you like to customize Tailwind, you'll often come in here and you'll say something like this, extend, and then you come in here and you're like, now what was that thing called? And then you come to the docs, you look at that just to make sure you're spelling it correctly. Well, no longer. All you have to do in VS Code here is hit cont Control and the space bar and all of your options display. So if I just start typing color, I'm going to see all the different options that mention color. And here the one I want is this colors. So now I can come in here and just inside here, I can just add whatever kind of custom color I want, like accent, and give it some kind of arbitrary value. So if I save this and jump back over this way, here's the, the thing I've got pulled up. And if I come in here, I can now change the text from this white color on hover to my accent on hover. And now it pulls in like that. Now, just a note, uh, because I've got a, a special plugin, I am actually have access to this while I'm typing uh, in my HTML. And that custom thing is just called Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. So if you don't have that, I think it makes Tailwind actually nice to write. Other than that, I don't think I would ever uh, use it, but it'll even pull in your customizations. Now we'll go ahead and switch that back to white because it's a little bit more pleasing. While we're here, I'm going to go ahead and show you my other one that I really, really like, and that is arbitrary variance. Now you can see here, I've got this nice hover state, which that looks great on desktop. The only problem is when I get to mobile and I make sure here that I've got a mobile with touch, not the no touch, you can see here, I'm not getting anything because you're not hovering on mobile. So how do I fix this so that it only shows on devices where you can actually hover? Well, you may or may not know this, but there is a media query for that exact state. So let me jump over here. And first of all, let's look at uh, this arbitrary variance down here. And you can see that you can add these variants directly in with the plugins. But with something like this, I'm not going to like use this everywhere. I'm going to use it in very small places. So for instance, there might be like a support query or something like that. And I don't want to have to extend that Tailwind config forever. And I might only use it in one place on the entire site. Well, all you can do is just add something like this. And it just opens up so many possibilities. And again, this is all in line. Um, so if you're using this a lot, obviously, you'd want to actually add some variant. But it's nice to be able to just arbitrarily add them. So for instance, here's what I would do with this. So if I move back here, what I actually want is I want it to always be showing here. Well, what I can do is I can go ahead and select for whether or not the device I'm viewing is able to hover. So let's come to this opacity zero and using that same syntax we just looked at, I'm gonna do in brackets here and then right outside a colon. All right, so that's kind of the starting point. Now I'm gonna write a media query and that media query is simply hover colon hover. And this is just standard CSS, a standard CSS media query to detect whether or not the device you're looking at can hover. And if I save this, you're gonna see automatically it already shows because I can't hover. Now if I switch this to a no touch environment, now I can hover and so now that, uh, that media query is uh, triggered. Now I can actually do the same thing up above here as well. So let me come up top here. We're gonna look both at this grayscale and at this hover state for the grayscale. For both of these, I'm gonna paste the same thing and make sure I've got a colon between those. And now if I save, you'll see that these are color all the time on a touch device and there's no hover state at all. 
Whereas if I take this off, now there is a hover state, and as I hover on and off, this arbitrary variant now allows me to have a grayscale effect and remove it on hover, and then have this thing be opacity 100, and then whenever the peer is, is, uh, is hovered on, and then for it to turn opacity zero whenever I can actually hover over that. So those are my favorite new features in Tailwind 3.1. I hope you enjoy those. And there's a bunch more here. Uh, and again, there's a long video explaining how to use each of them and kind of different use cases for those. Well, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.